right. So, oh yeah, Yurik's got the uh, the interesting take on Extreme Control. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we've got the Elysian Nightfall Maul deck versus similar to Lights Out Ace's tournament winning deck, but it's a little bit different. It's a slightly different take on those. Um, both of these players, again, 2-1. Uh, this is the best of three, and the winner of this should very well make it into the top four. Yeah, and this is a, this is a pretty unique take on Night Maul also, so definitely some innovation happening with Diana's side. Absolutely. This deck has been um, the, impressive uh, to me today. Definitely something that I have not seen on ladder recently, but definitely worth checking out. Yeah, it's looked good. I think the Dazzles play really well into the deck's game plan. Um, and the uh, the market is also... I've really liked this Tidal Forces. It has, like, it's just another... Like you were saying about Theo's deck, how it gives more angles of attack. Um, I think that's something that Maul can benefit from. Given that it's pretty, it's pretty one-dimensional if you without that curse. Mm -hmm. All right, Yurik Yu's looking at uh, Crest, the Cobalt Wave Stone, an Honor of Claws, two Hailstorms, and Emergent. So sort of your typical hand. Uh, no Justice influence there, but also no Justice cards in hand. So see how that goes. Did Yurik go down to six? Did they did they go with the big brain play of redrawing to six on purpose? <laughs> they may have. <laughs> We'll have to follow up with a, a winner's interview later about that. <laughs> if you're, it happens to win the tournament. Absolutely. Well, he has done so in the past, so I'm sure he's feeling it. He was actually, I think Yurik Yu was actually the first Tuesday Night Eternal winner ever. Um, has that? Well, he'll always have that title. <laughs> well, I would take any title I can get. <laughs> it's pretty brave playing everything out into Hailstorm. Yeah. Two hailstorms in hand. I assume Yurikyu's just going to fire it off here. But do they not have? Oh, they do. They do. They drew a, a Silex and they have the Waystone. So they can play out the hailstorm here. That's going to. Is that backbreaking for Diana? Oh, and then a dazzle off the top. Yeah, I don't that's tough. think so. Because I think you still you can still draw to Maul. Because Yurik isn't going to like play twelve cards in yeah. a couple of turns and have no hand. That's true. Maul's going to be really good in this matchup. And we're like we're in range where Maul is a really dangerous card for Yurik. Um, so Yurik is going to be looking for. Waystones. Four of Cobalt Waystone is our face Aegis enabler here, but that's kind of it. No transposes. Which seems to be the direction that these control-based strategies are moving towards is moving away from transpose, mm -hmm. um, which I think is net good, but it does make the decks a little bit softer to um, to these decks that prey on like big spells like Silverblade Menace and Maul. Mm -hmm. Now he's saving... Now, Yurikyu does have the Cobalt Waystone in hand and definitely sitting on that until the right time for it. I feel like the right time is now. Yep. You, well, I don't know. I think you just have to get it up and hope that <clears throat> hope that Diana's hand doesn't line up in a way that yep. punishes it. And the onslaught's going to trigger there. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's the one thing with these control deck hands. When you have six different spells in hand, <laughs> you have your options. Uh, she's going to go ahead and hit Harsh Rule, bumping that up to 10. So Harsh Rule's off the table for a while. Not that Yurikyu had double Justice Influence anyway for it, but not casting that anytime soon. Yeah, this actually... Yurik's removal doesn't look like it lines up very well against um, Diana's threats. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like maybe Yurik is trying to take a more proactive approach to ending the game. Yeah, I'm going to take that, that Royal same... Decree. That's not really going to... It's going to hit the Dazzle, but but yeah, here you go. The, the Hailstorm plus the Snowball is going to clear the, clear the way. I do like that Yurik is using a lot of cards to try to get underneath the Maul. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is smart. Dumping their hand as much as possible here. We can be on the lookout for an equivocate to pop the Aegis mm -hmm. with uh, on a Maul for eight. Yeah. Like on turn eight. Yeah. 
I have noticed that, so. you know, you had mentioned before the tournament that, you know, the face age is making a difference, but I have noticed how many ways Diana has just kind of incidentally to pop that face ages <laughs> just mm-hmm. while doing other things, you know, not, you know, while getting other value along the way, but able to pop that face age just so that the mall can connect. Yep. And that, uh, yeah, that's part of the reason why I like the inclusion of Albin Rowe. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And there's the so mall. So this, this seems... This is game. Is this game right here? Equivocate, just like you said. Mall. Yeah, you called it. Equivocate that. Pop the face ages off the equivocate trigger and maul for lethal. Wow, your psyche you saw that coming. <laughs> there you go, Diana. Perfect. Taking that first game over your Q. Well played. Maul just might be might have been really well positioned coming into this. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't see. I don't think we've seen like. I'd be curious to see how Maul plays against like illusion spells because i imagine that's a really hard matchup for yeah. maul um but into these like slower control and mid-range decks maul is maul's got the key what did uh what did diana's path look like to here we saw diana against the shift stone processor combo yep we saw uh, um we saw the win against xenon which was another mid-rangey strategy. Can you take a look? The loss came to Stone Scar, which is traditionally a hard matchup for Maul, mm-hmm. and then preying on control. So it seems like her matchups yeah. have lined up uh, really well. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like you said, I think it was a good good choice for for today. It seems like it matches up well in these matchups. And they're getting ready for round two or game two here. And there we go. All right, so we see Equivocate, this... Teacher, Equivocate, Permafrost. A little light on units, but not bad. I think I would throw this back. You need that early pressure. Yeah. I want one Equivocate for that Aegis popping reason, but... Yeah, you can't bank on this type of hand. You can't You can't hope that Maul's just going to do 25 and not do any damage <laughs> along the way. I like the Teacher of Humility here. That If that would connect, that would do a lot of damage to Yurk, but... Um... Yeah, there are eight one. There's seven one power ways for that to not happen. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Magical Christmas land, hoping that that's just going to connect without any difficulty. I mean, there's. Uh, it's reasonable to be like ask the question if they have the answer, go from there. But I think this hand is not strong enough. Yep. All right, she's going to toss it back. And this one you got four, still not great. Four, four power, Unraveling Fanatic, and Alvin Rowe here. You know, toss that one back and go to six. This is a good six though. Two drop into yeah. three drop. I think, I think the Fanatic keep wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world because you could just sit on it and let it draw you both cards. Now that's a dangerous prospect into control if you don't have pressure. Mm-hmm. So I bet this is, this is a better choice. But I think that Cultist hand on seven on a redraw is. Yeah maybe closer than it is at first glance. Yeah. Another Lunar Mage is off the top. So a decent hand here for Dan is you're going to go to six. This is a pretty good six to have. Uh, Yurik Yu has lots of action. They've got Torch, Hailstorm, of course, a Snowball off of Hurler. They've got Garden, Pristine Light, Merchant, Wisdom, and Multiple Power. So Yurik Yu's got to be pretty happy with this hand. If they can just keep hitting their Power Drops, which they're going to scout and keep, a, keep on top, then they'll be in pretty good shape here. I like this power efficient turn from Diana. Yep, absolutely. Nothing super special there, but it's probably tempting to get a little greedy with the mm-hmm. teacher. Yep, I'm gonna do you know the little things matter, right? Do all the little things right. I have an update from across the board. IP Longo did win their match, so wall three zero. They actually are going to go four zero, and of course lock up that number one spot there, um, which I believe Stone Scar not dead. Stone Scar not dead, absolutely, uh, and I believe that should knock Stormguard out as well. Oh, this is really bad for Yurik. Go for the Hailstorm after the Snowball, and that's going to get dazzled from Diana, keeping that on top and allowing that teacher to hit. And that's going to be tough. Yeah, that's for like the dream. Connection actually going to play on another teacher here. Now, Yurik can harsh rule. Um, although they have two. No, they do have a waystone. Let's say they have two crests in hand, but they have a waystone as well. Thank you, Parmelian has feet for hands for the follow. Hope you're enjoying the action. Hey, I know those guys. There you go. That, that harsh rule will take care of those units. But we're in a similar position to last game where now, really, Diana just needs to find a way to pop the face Aegis and then hit them all, and Yurik will be done for. But. 
with neither of those cards in hand, that's also asking a lot. <laughs> I think uh, I think if I'm Yurik, I would try to avoid playing a unit for the rest of this game so I can avoid the <laughs> equivocate. Yeah. As much as you and can. just cut off, like make it be like an Albin Row plus, because that's really hard to do Albin Row and Maul in the same turn because it's so expensive. Yeah. And there's the Maul, but no way to pop the Aegis yet. Diana does not draw an equivocate. Oh, the Aegis passed. There you go. And there's the Maul. 